Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Philip Shaw, Johnny. Oh, fine. What have you got for me? Mr. Dale Martin is insured with National. He owns a gym, one of those bodybuilding places. Man was killed there. When did it happen? This morning, about an hour ago. Now, we don't know if it's an accident or not. The police are over there now. Anything to work on? Nothing. That's why I called you. Better get over there right away. I'll do it. But I don't take off my shirt. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you John Lund in a transcribed adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. Yes, for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment... It's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The lively, delicious flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, helps keep your throat moist, and gives you a nice little lift. The good, smooth chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert, adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. So for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, National All Risk Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the blackmail matter. Expense account item one, $1.40. Cab fare and tip for ride from my office to Martin's gym. After receiving what little information there was from you by phone, I arrived at 1215 at 1084 6th Avenue in the heart of downtown. On the second floor, I found Dale Martin, a very nervous Adonis, seated at a desk in his office. A policeman at the door informed me that a Lieutenant Nathan of the homicide detail had stepped out for a minute, and the coroner was expected soon. Mr. Martin? Yeah? I'm Johnny Dollar from the National Insurance Company. Oh, that's the outfit I'm insured with. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm here. I want to get the facts in case there's any claim. Now, tell me, what happened? I don't know. I went back to the locker room to check on the towels, and I found him lying on the floor. Found who? Uh, his name's Royal, Frederick Royal. He's been coming up here for over a year. Well, why did you call the police and not a doctor? Because I think he was murdered. Why murdered? I've seen a lot of accidents around this gym, but never saw anything like this. It, it wasn't an accident. What makes you so sure? Well, it looked like his neck was broken. I don't know how it happened, so I call the police. Now, the publicity's going to ruin what little business I have. Murder always ruins something. You got any idea who might have done it? No. Who was in the place when you discovered the body? My three assistants and three fellows working out. They all still here? Yeah, all of them. Nobody else left or came in? Just the cops. B business is real slow. Does everybody know about it? No, I took the body and put it back in the rub-down room. Haven't even told my boys. Well, the officer at the door won't let anybody leave, so let's have a look at the body and see what we can find out. Martin left one of his boys to answer the phone, and everyone else was keeping busy wrestling with weights as he led me through the locker room. The one man was taking a shower... At the end of the room, he unlocked the door, and we walked in. The smell of rubbing alcohol was strong enough to give you a hangover. There were white curtains separating two rubbing tables. The first one was empty. In back of that curtain, Mr. Dollar. Okay. Not very pretty. Mm -mm. Circus rubber man would need vulcanizing if he turned his head that far. Busted neck, all right. I wish the coroner would get in and take him away. It hurts me seeing his head hanging like that. Why don't you move him? Oh, no, sir, not me. I caught a good from the lieutenant for moving him in here. Well, don't worry about Mr. Royal. He can't feel a thing. <laughs> lieutenant Nathan arrived with the coroner, and the latter confirmed our diagnosis. 
Nathan had Martin keep his clients and assistant muscle men busy. They started comparing biceps and forgot anybody else was there. Nathan was an old friend, so I didn't have to convince him that I was there on business. You saw the corpse, a dollar? Yeah, I took a pair of pretty strong hands to do a job like that. Yeah, that makes everybody around here a suspect. Got any ideas? Yeah, you'd have to know a man pretty well to let him get that close to you without starting something. Yeah, somebody could have been rubbing a kink out of his neck and got carried away with his work. Yeah. Why don't we start asking some questions? Yeah, I'll go out and round up everybody. Might as well start at the beginning. Nathan herded everyone together, and the questioning started. The men were very unhappy. This bad publicity that couldn't be helped. Mr. Robert Wells, songwriter, Mr. Michael Darling, car salesman, and the third and last, Mr. Patrick Mullins, jeweler. Three prosperous men, three prosperous denials. The assistants came next, the three men who worked for Martin. First, Bernie Carroll, the man who'd instructed Fred Royal, the one who'd put him through his exercises and sent him in to take a shower before he cooled off and got stiff. Sure. I worked him out and sent him in the shower like always. We tell him to take a good long hot shower to relax the muscles. Isn't that right, Dale? That's right, Lieutenant. That's the way it works. Bernie left him, went over to start on Mr. Wells. Bernie's a pretty strong boy. Yeah. Any one of us could have gone to the locker room at one time or another, Lieutenant. You found him, didn't you, Mr. Martin? Yeah. Why did you happen to go back to the locker room at that particular time? I do it every day, checking a towel, soap, see that everybody has everything he needs. Question after question, trying to nail down alibis, trying to make them stick or tear them apart. According to everybody so far, it it was a big mystery. Next man, Jack Olson. Yeah, I went back by the locker room several times. Why? Well, there's an electric coffee maker on a table against the wall back there. I wanted to get some coffee. Mm-hmm. The other times? Well, once to look at the appointment board and see what's coming in, later to get some chalk for my hands. Chalk for your hands? Yeah. Keeps your hands from perspiring and making blisters, you know, when you're working with heavy weights. Mm-hmm. You're fairly new here, aren't you, Jack? Well, three weeks. How'd you know that, Dollar? Well, the other boys all have heavy calluses. They don't use chalk. You know quite a bit about this weightlifting stuff, huh? Oh, sure. I used to lift candy bars when I was a kid. All right, all right. Call in the last one. The last man, Johnny Morgan, and his story was no different than the others. Yes, he'd walked back past the locker room. No, he had not slipped in and popped Mr. Royal's neck while he was preparing to take his shower. The coroner removed the body, and all the rest went down to the precinct to sign formal statements. They were all released and sent home, pending further investigation. I hailed a cab and rode home with Dale Martin. Would you like some apple or carrot juice? Well, I'll try anything once. Good for you. Yeah, I figured that. You didn't kill him, did you, Martin? Don't be silly. He was the best customer I had. I wouldn't kill off, kill off my business. Here. Thanks. Do you have any ideas, Dollar? Nope. How long did you say Fred Royal had been coming to your gym? Over a year. What do you know about him? Not much. He was a wolf like the girls. Always talking about the gal he was out with the night before. I got tired of his gab. I put him straight. You know what business he was in? Whatever it was, he had a lot of money. Wore a new suit every time he came around. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Oh, just a minute. For you, Dollar. Oh, thanks. Hello? I got something on the dead man. Got a record. Blackmail. You know where he lived? We're checking. Oh, wait a minute. Now, Martin, you wouldn't by any chance know where Fred Royal lived, would you? Well, I uh, bill to him every month. I got my books here in the apartment. I'll get the address. Oh, Nathan, Martin's got his address. I found something else in his personal effects. A key to a safety deposit box. Boys are checking to see which bank. Here's the mm-hmm. address, Dollar. Fred Royal, 673 East Weeping Willow Circle. I told Nathan I'd meet him at Royal's place. I downed my liquefied carrots, said goodbye to Martin. Half an hour later, the lieutenant and yours truly, Johnny Dollar, were tearing Mr. Fred Royal's apartment to pieces. Ah, nothing. 
Yeah, I came up empty, too. Uh, hey. What's the matter? Here's a date book. Good. Maybe we've been working on a holiday. Let's see. Here's a name. Barbara Carroll. Carroll. That's the name of one of Martin's muscle trainers, Bernie Carroll. Mm -hmm. Same name on some of the other pages. The fifth, Barbara, six o'clock. Again on the second, Barbara, eight o'clock. Again on the 28th and the 22nd. Wonder if there's any connection. Oh, might be his sister. Let's give it a try. Bernie and Barbara Carroll. Sounds like something they'd play at the palace. Well, let's go see their act. Here's the apartment. They live with that new fellow. Jack Olson. Yeah, you're the quiet one. Police. Yes? I'm Lieutenant Nathan Homicide. This is Johnny Dollar. How you do? How you do? We'd like to talk to you, Miss Carroll. Well, certainly, Lieutenant. Come here. Thank you. I was just making some lemonade. Would you like some? Yeah, thanks. It is pretty hot out. Maybe you'd like something stronger. No, thanks. The lieutenant's on duty. I, uh, I guess you've heard about the accident. You like your lemonade sweet, Lieutenant? Medium, please. Here you are. Oh, thank you. Your brother didn't mention anything about your going out with Royal. He was probably protecting his little sister. The lieutenant found your name written in Royal's date book. I've been out with him six or seven times. You know what his business was? He never discussed it. Did you ever meet any of his friends? No. Did he ever mention any of the other fellows at the gym? At the gym? I don't think so. Mm hmm. Jack Olson lives here, doesn't he? That's right. Whose picture is that on the piano? Oh, that's Jack's father. You don't have any idea why anyone would want to kill Royal, do you? No. How did uh, Jack Olson happen to move in here with you and your brother? Bernie asked him to. When he went to work for Martin, he was living in a terrible place. One small room. I told Bernie he could move in here if he shared the rent. Mm -hmm. How well did Olson know Royal? He'd seen him at the gym. Seen him here when he came to pick me up. Mm. Where's Olson now? Working, I think. Well, thanks, Miss Carroll. We'll be talking to you again. More lemonade? Later, maybe, Miss Carroll. Friends, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Chew Wrigley's Spearmint while you're working. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint gives you a refreshing little lift. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied. Makes your job seem easier. Chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum in your home, when you're out walking or driving, when you're enjoying sports and other activities. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good anytime, and the natural chewing aids digestion and helps keep your teeth bright and attractive. Yes, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. And now with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Three in the afternoon, out of Barbara Carroll's cool apartment and down in the blistering street, the thermometer crowding 90 and the humidity sticking to us like a steaming blanket. Ugh, I feel awful. Terrible day to solve a murder. I want to go look through some newspaper files. What for? That picture on the piano. Jack Olson's father? Yeah. I've seen it someplace before. It's a news story connected with it. Yeah, well, I'll drop you off. I gotta get back to the precinct, see if the boys have found the safety deposit box that fits Fred Royal's key. Nathan dropped me off with a newspaper, and I went down to the morgue to do some hunting. The air conditioning made the job easier, and by four o'clock I was headed for Nathan's office. We found the bank and the safe deposit box. Oh? Anything turn up? Yeah, yeah. Royal was doing some pretty fancy blackmailing. Here's a bundle of evidence and a list of names. Mm-hmm. Hmm. 
Well, I can understand why someone would pay to keep these out of circulation. Yeah. Lousy photography. Huh? What'd you find out? Here. Mm, newspaper clipping. Oh, picture of Jack Olson's father. Same as the one on the piano. Prominent banker leaps to death. William Barrett. William Barrett? The boy's name is Olson. That's what he calls himself. William Barrett. Barrett. Give me that list we got out of the deposit box. I've just been looking at it. William Barrett's name is on here, all right. Mm. That article you've got on his suicide mentions that he left a son and a wife. Yeah. Well, let's go pick up Jack Olson or Barrett or whatever his name is. Well, it might not have meant a thing, but at least we had found one person who had a strong connection with Frederick Royal other than socially. The boy who called himself Jack Olson was the son of one William Barrett, deceased, and one of Fred Royal's blackmail victims. Barrett had jumped off a tall building, and according to the newspaper, he had left no reason for his actions. There was a possibility that Fred Royal's blackmail had driven him to it. And if that was so, his son would have had a very strong reason for wanting to break Mr. Fred Royal's neck. We climbed into a squad car and hurried back to Barbara Carroll's apartment, where Jack Olson lived as a boarder. Now let's go. Hey, wait a minute. No, what's wrong? Jack Olson, coming out of the building. All right, we pick him up on the street. He's hailing a cab. Come on, let's see where he's going. Wouldn't it be easier to just ask him? Oh, stop trying to ruin my afternoon. You know, there's nothing more relaxing than a pleasant drive through quiet, peaceful old New England. We started tailing Jack Olson's cab. Across town. Along the Merrick Parkway. Across a bridge. He's headed for Long Island. Well, your Connecticut badge won't be much good over there. We kept going across the sound, past the outskirts of a couple of waterfront towns, and onto a long highway. Pretty expensive cab ride. Pretty expensive. Pretty important. Yeah. Well, they're turning off on that road. Hope we don't lose them. We took the road to the right off the highway and spotted the cab up ahead, pulling into the entrance of a large white building. The sign over the tall iron gate read, Lakeview Sanitarium. We waited for him to go in. Yes? Is there something I can do for you? I'm looking for a man. Oh, any particular man? Oh, who's in charge of this place? Uh, Dr. Feather. Well, run him out, please. I want to talk to him. Which one of you is the patient? Patient? Can't you tell? Look, just go get Dr. Fodder. Fedder. Oh, Fedder, okay. Go get him and tell him Lieutenant Nathan wants to talk to him. Lieutenant Nathan? Uh, of the cavalry. Huh? Oh, well, I'll get him right away. <laughs> Lieutenant. Hey, <laughs> you think that's funny, huh? Oh, well, I liked it. Let's see what kind of a reaction it gets out of Dr. Fetter. Cavalry. Nice thing to say in a place like this. Uh, Lieutenant Nathan? Yeah, that's right. I'm Dr. Fetter. Oh, this is Mr. Dollar. How do you do? How do you do? Now, are you related? No, but we've been friends a long, long time, haven't we, Nate? Yeah, I'm a police officer, Doctor. Oh. We've been following a man. He came in here a few minutes ago. Is that right? The lieutenant thinks he might be a killer. I is can he... handle this, Dollar. Huh? Doctor, I'm with Central Division Homicide. This isn't my territory, but I'd appreciate uh, it. Which one of you is the patient? Oh, now, now, look, this is getting a little ridiculous. Here are my credentials. Oh. The man we want came in here a few minutes ago. Well, Mr. Barrett is the only one... And his real name is Barrett. Who's he seeing? His mother. What's wrong with his mother? Mrs. Barrett is seriously ill. Have anything to do with her husband's suicide? Everything to do with it. I doubt if Mrs. Barrett will ever recover. We went back out to the car and tried to put it all together. Jack's father had jumped off a roof. He was being blackmailed and couldn't take it. The shock of his suicide had driven Mrs. Barrett into a permanent breakdown. And Fred Royal had been responsible for the whole thing. 
Motive enough for Jack to get a job with Dale Martin so he could get his hands on Fred Royal's neck? Cavalry. Oh, stop groaning. Tell me what you think of my theory. We still need a confession. We'll get it. Mind if I make a pest of myself and ask how? Let's ride back to town and see Dale Martin. You're going to come up and take a workout in a rub tomorrow, huh? That's right, Martin. And I want you to make sure that Olson takes care of me. Did he do it, darling? I think so. But why? He seems like such a nice kid. He had a pretty good reason. But we need a confession, and Dollar has an idea how to get it. I want Olson working on me through the whole workout, especially when I get on the rubbing table. You're in pretty good shape, Mr. Dollar. Well, I'm carrying a few extra pounds. Oh. I will knock that off of you in a hurry. Don't try to talk while you're using the pulleys. Hi. Hi, Martin. He's in pretty good shape, Mr. Martin. Now, let's see. Yeah, better not do too much on the stomach the first day. I'll see you later, Mr. Dollar. <sighs> nice fellow, Martin. Yeah, very nice. Tell me, have you uh, found out anything about Mr. Royal's death? Oh, the police have got a few ideas. <sighs> Lieutenant and I went up to see your roommate's sister. Yeah, Barbara told me. I hope you don't suspect her. She kind of liked Mr. Royal. She wouldn't have any reason to kill him. All right, let's go back to the rub table before you cool off. Huh? You don't mind going in there, do you? No. Why should I? Oh, some people are funny about rooms where they're... It's been a dead person, you know? It doesn't bother me, Mr. Dollar. <clears throat> Martin's got all his towels piled on the other table. I can move them if you like. Oh, no, no. It doesn't make any difference. Royal wasn't killed in here anyway. All right. Up on your back. Yeah. Give me a good brisk rub. And let me relax for about ten minutes. All right. Slide down a little. Yeah. Uh... What'd you do before you came to work for Martin, Jack? Oh, not much. Went to school, finally decided to look for a job. Found this one. You ever study this sort of thing? No. No, there's really not much to it. Martin shows us how to use the machines, to help the clients, and rub the neck and back. Well, then all you need is a good build, a strong pair of hands, huh? Yeah, yeah I guess so. Your family live in Hartford? No. I noticed the picture of your father on Barbara's piano. Fine-looking man. He's dead now. Oh, sorry. So am I. Your mother still living? No. Oh! Oh, I'm sorry. Am I rubbing too hard? Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> well, you certainly got the strength for the job. Yeah, I'll turn off the vibrator and just use my hand. Do you... Police find out anything about Mr. Royal? Yeah. He was a blackmailer. Ow! Oh, I'm awfully sorry. I'm a little nervous today. Maybe I'd better get one of the other fellows to finish your rub. Oh, no, no, no. That's all right. I'm just a little tied up. The neck is stiff. Try and relax. Guess I keep thinking about Royal and his broken neck. You think I might break yours, Mr. Dow? <laughs> well, wouldn't be hard. I was good and relaxed, you could snap it in a second. Yeah. Yes, I could. So Mr. Royal was a blackmailer, huh? Yeah. Had a record. They're the foulest people on earth. Yeah, they certainly are. Could ruin a lot of lives. Probably why he was murdered. You think he was blackmailing someone here in the gym? Oh, not necessarily. Well, if he wasn't, then no one in the shop would have a motive for killing him. Well, I've got a theory about that. I think someone in this gym hated him so much that they waited until no one was looking and Royal was all alone. And they slipped in on him and twisted his neck until it broke and he strangled. Why would they hate him so much if he wasn't blackmailing him? He might have been blackmailing someone very close and dear to the killer. Maybe the person Royal was blackmailing couldn't stand it. 
committed suicide. It's an interesting theory. Take your family, for instance. Ow! Oh, I'm sorry. You weren't relaxing. Supposing Royal was blackmailing a member of your family. Your father, for instance. I can't rub your neck unless you relax more. Maybe your father couldn't take it. Maybe he couldn't pay him anymore. And instead of disgracing his family, he committed suicide. Just turn your head a little to the side, Mr. Dollar. Is that better? Much. Well, if that happened to my family, Mr. Dollar, I guess I would kill Mr. Royal, not mind a bit. How does your father die, Jack? He jumped off a roof. Now, if you just turn your head a little more, I'll try to pop your vertebrae, huh? We followed you out to Long Island yesterday, Jack. I'm going to adjust your neck, Mr. Dollar. It's better if you relax so it won't hurt. Uh, well, if you wanted to, you could pop it anyway. I couldn't stop you in time. No, I don't guess you could. There, now the other side, huh? Did you kill Fred Royal? Yes. Relax. All right, Mr. Dollar. Let's go down to the police station. Lieutenant's outside with Martin. After you, Mr. Barrett. Nathan took Jack Barrett down to the station and got from him a signed confession. I went with Martin, and with every drink I saw another Barrett. So finally I gave it up and came up here to my office. Expense account, item two, $4.53, one-fifth of very dry gin. Martin forgot his health and hygiene for a couple of hours and finished what I didn't drink. Item three, $16.75. Cab fare for a ride up through the country, all by myself. Expense account total, $22.68. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, friends... Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, freshens your taste, sweetens your breath. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied, makes whatever you're doing more enjoyable. Yes, for refreshment plus chewing enjoyment, Treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Millions enjoy it daily. Get a few packages and always keep some handy. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, brought to you by Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Blake Edwards with music by Milton Charles. Featured in tonight's cast were Edgar Barrier, High Averback, Hal March, Jim Nusser, Tony Barrett, and Virginia Gregg. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's story of Johnny Dollar and that you're enjoying delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day. This is Charles Lyon inviting you to join us again next week at this same time when, from Hollywood, John Lund returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar.